thank you and all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Our brother Zachary. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen. I want to first off thank the Lord for the salvation of my soul and the forgiveness of my many sins. I'll be leading us through a Psalm 100 today, so if you would all stand with me, I'd appreciate that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen.
Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry and I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart I'm caught up in your presence I just wanna sit here at your feet I'm caught
You're all that matters, Jesus. You're all that matters. Coming back to what really matters. Just your heart. Just want to bless your heart, Jesus. I'm caught up in your presence. wanna sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never wanna leave and oh I'm not here for blessing Jesus you don't owe me anything and more than anything that you can do oh I just want you Hallelujah. God bless you, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It seems that we, it seems that we need a band to worship the Lord. Or do we? Hallelujah. There is no, you know, worship to the Lord is not, although Psalms 150 says worship him with the songs, the, the trumpets and the harp and the strings and all the instruments and what have you. Um, David only played a harp or a guitar for our modern day instruments and it was only his guitar and his singing unto the Lord by himself with his one instrument and the Bible says that Saul was 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 troubled and there were spirits constantly troubling him because he opened the window for the enemy to operate in his life by rejecting and disobeying God's instructions so as I always tell you right there's no vacuums in the spirit world either the spirit of God is leading you or demons are leading you period no ifs and buts about it and he is inflicted by demonic oppression, demonic presence in his life until he, someone heard that there was a young boy in a small town that played an instrument. And when he played it, demons left. And he invited David to the palace. And David comes this young shepherd boy, not a grown adult, mature worship leader. He was a young man who loved Jesus, who loved the Lord, right? who loved God in such a way that he had a personal relationship with him while he was out in the desert, in the wilderness, in the fields, watching his father's sheep. There was no fanfare. There was no pomp and circumstance with David's worship. It was pure. It was distinct, it was unique, it was between he and his God. And David played that instrument for Saul. And the Bible says that those spirits had to leave. <laughs> they had to leave. They could not handle, they couldn't handle the presence of God that David ushered with his worship. And so, I want to challenge you, church. I want to challenge you. This, the lyrics to this last song are so apropos. I'm not here for blessings. I just want to worship you. I'm not here for what you can do for me, Lord. Matter of fact, 
I'm not here to, to check the box. I came to church. I came to worship Sunday. I did my job. Boom, I can go home. I can smile now. Matter of fact, while I'm here, because I didn't come to check the box, I came for you, Lord. While I'm here, nothing else matters. Amen. I know it's snowing outside. Look, see it? I know it's coming down, and it's coming down hard, right? But there's a window. When does it start? When will it finish? They're pretty much on point. Four o'clock, it's over. Help me, Lord. <laughs> What's your focus today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this applies to not just this fellowship, us, what we're doing unto the Lord, where, where are you mentally, emotionally, right now, if you're here present, if you're watching via social media, where are you right now? This, I, I think about when God reached out, came down to Adam and asked him, where are you? Did God not know? Of course he knew. But Adam was lost. And he said, I hid myself because I was afraid I was naked. Can, can you put those lyrics to that song up again? Oh, here it is. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. <laughs> Are we sitting at his feet? Yes. Yes. Are we yes. caught up with his presence? Yes. Yes. I'm caught up in this holy moment. Is this a holy moment? Yes. Yes. Are we, uh, is this moment just segregated, separated, uniquely for him yes. hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Yes. is this God's time in your life right now nothing else matters forget about the snow forget about what's going on later forget about Super Bowl Sunday forget about anything and everything else this is God's time hallelujah yes. and I want to focus on you Lord and you alone hallelujah because Lord I may have had a rough week I may have had a rough moment during this week I may have offended you. I may have said things that I didn't want to say, but I said them in angst, in anxiety, in stress, in pressure. But Lord, I want to focus on you today because I need you. I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you. I am nothing without you. I'm weak without you. I can't handle life without you. I need you, Lord. This holy moment. To the point where you don't want to leave. You don't want to go. Lord, you don't owe me anything. How much has he already done for us? Just if, if, if he had never done anything else but simply died on the cross for my salvation, that is way above and beyond the call of duty. More than I could ever ask for. That my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That I have eternity yes. to look forward to. That life is not just this existence. This will pass. And then when it passes, I'm going to a eternity in his presence. Right. Not just this moment. Hallelujah. Right. More than anything, Lord. Hallelujah. Do you want him? Can we sing this song one more time? Yes. Yes. Can we sing it from our heart? Yes. Can we sing it like we mean it? Let's sing that song one more time, amen? We, 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 need to, we, need, we need this moment of refreshing, hallelujah. We need this moment of awakening. I, I, know, I know that, that, that some of us might be there, but some of us still need a little reality check. And, and there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself because that's why we come here, amen? Praise God. But Lord, imagine if we all had... The same mindset, the same heart, the same desire to exalt him and tune everything else out. That it's only him, Lord. Yes. Oh, man, you're talking about bringing heaven down. Hallelujah. Yes. You're talking about bringing heaven down yes. and allowing God to operate and move in our hearts and in our minds and break the chains of bondage, yes. emotional, yes. social, yes. spiritual. Yes. Bondage that binds the mind. Oh, Lord, have your way, Lord. I just want more of you. Hallelujah.
caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you When I forgot you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do.
I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this whole moment I never want to leave And oh, I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do Oh, I just want Good morning. I just have to share and piggyback off what the pastor was saying. But uh, four years ago, when I was done playing games of my life and God gave me focus, um, there was something about my mindset that changed, and it was this. Most of my life, I always had this vision, okay, eventually, Ben, you're going to stop doing these practices you're going to stop doing these sins. You're going to be plugged into a church, marry a Christian wife, raise your kids in the church. And I, I had a whole picture painted out on the, the level of Christian I was going to be because I knew I was down here. And I was like, I'm going to be here. But I, I didn't realize it, but I was painting a ceiling. And when I rededicated my life to God, I knew in that moment that I was removing the ceiling. And I was like, because I, I was like, you're either all in or all out. You don't. You don't tell God, like, how much you're going to do, you know? And so I never really focused on it because I was personally, I was scared. Like, how far will, will God make, how fanatical will God make me be if I <laughs> take off this, the glass ceiling? And um, so it's so interesting because I still have those thoughts. It's like um, I'm willing to be taken, you know, at least right as far as Paul was, right, where he's getting persecuted and put in jail and stuff, and if not more, right, he was just a human. Um, but anyway, as far as it pertains to Bricktown, um, this is the most people I've ever seen at Bricktown with precipitation <laughs> of any kind. I'm dead serious. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm driving up from Manhattan, right? And the Palisades was bad. And I was like, whoa, this is like borderline irresponsible, but I'm so happy I'm doing it. And I even knew yesterday when I saw that the snow forecast was 9 a.m., I was like, nice, I can get in before the snow. And... I was like, I'd rather be snowed in in God's house than my house with other believers. And honestly, there's a good chance we're going to be snowed in. I know that you don't want to hear that. I was telling Asia, I'm serious. Just, we're in the thick of it right now. But I'm so happy. I'm like, this is so cool. So first of all, I'm so encouraged. Look at all you here. This shows your growth. First of all, the pandemic gives you the easiest excuse in the world's eyes to not be here. And you've been coming faithfully. And then with this snow, which is actually potentially dangerous, that didn't even stop you. So whether you believe it or not, you are here search to be with your maker, right? Yes. And so um, let's, if we could just, in your mind, get rid of, like, be like, okay, God, take me where you want to go, you know? Release the chains. Take away the ceiling, whatever. I'm not, I'm not just talking long term. I'm talking right now, this second, you know? Like, for all I care, we can just worship for two hours with, uh, you know, the dope playlist that Zach puts on. Um, but, yeah, and, and just lastly, I just want to touch on this. You know, God is revealing to me all the evil that's going on in the world, and it's so crazy the extremes people are doing in the name of evil, and I at least want to be that extreme for what's good. Right? So I'm like, how can I top that in, in the spiritual realm for God? So anyway, if we could just, like, not do offering right away, if we could just at least listen to one more song, if that would be okay. And, like, your mindset would be like, okay, God, take me, you know? Just, like, let go and let him take you. So we're here for a reason. We're snowed in for a reason. And let's see what God does.
I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. The price for my heart And I don't have a context For that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend All I know is I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done At this time, we're going to take the offering. Uh, let us just pray over it. 
Father God, uh, we thank you for protecting us on our way here, Lord. Uh, we pray that you uh, additionally protect us on our way home later, whenever that is, Father God. And um, I thank you for the ability to come meet and worship you corporately, Father God. I thank you for the obedience of all of the saints here, Lord. And um, the analogy you were putting in my heart, you know, this morning was driving without the emergency brake. We all know that what that's like when we're driving and we're like, why, why are we kind of sticking? Why are we not really going with ease? And we realize we forgot to take the emergency brake off. Lord, I pray that as a church and individually, we take the emergency brake off our spiritual walk, Lord, towards holiness, towards sanctification, towards walking with the calling that you have given us, Father God. And Lord, as we um, give faithfully of our finances, that we have the same mindset, the same heart, heart uh, posture, Father God, that we'd give generously knowing that you are our provider, Father God, and that um, you can multiply more than we can ever think to imagine. So, Father God, um, I pray over this offering and for the rest of the service, Lord, and, and just move, God. If you have to break the program up, break the program, and we just ask that you move because that's why we came here. We came here for a move of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do the right. 
that we're gonna dance, 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 sing the rhythm. Dance, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. And if he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're gonna jump, 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 jump in the rhythm. Jump, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. And if he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're gonna shout, 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 shout in the rhythm. Shout, 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 yeah. Yeah.
Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth and reminds them of the intimacy and the purity of the Lord's Supper. They were unfortunately doing it in a disorderly manner in that there was favoritism and folks who had money hung out with people who had money and the poor were being rejected and they were people who had a lot and they would bring all of their lot and they would all have a party and celebrate and eat and when the poor folk came there wasn't much left for them and Paul rebuked them this was the rebuke and he said to them clearly what he received from the Lord he passed on to them this is not something that we do by custom or tradition per se, but in obedience to the Lord's command. Amen. Two things he commands us to do once we're in and of the house. Get baptized and Holy Communion. Amen. So we celebrate communion in obedience to our Lord. And Paul writes and says, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And they ate the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink of the cup. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. A new covenant declared by our Lord. A new pact, a new arrangement. You don't have to kill any more animals. As, as good as that was by God's command. The problem with that wasn't that the blood wasn't sufficient of that sacrifice. The problem is that you had to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Because that blood dried up. That blood lost its effect for the next sin you were going to commit. Because you were going to sin again. But now God gives us a new covenant, a new pact, a new arrangement. And the arrangement is, as John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. How much blood has to be spilt? Well, all of his blood was spilled. And we come to him, and that blood covers us, that blood cleanses us of sin. He paid the price, he made the sacrifice, he did it himself, we didn't have to do anything. But here's the awesomeness of that sacrifice. Three days later, like he said he would, he resurrected and in the power of that resurrection, through the power of Holy Spirit, he lives. And guess what? With him resurrecting, with his resurrection, with he being alive, his blood still flows. Because he's alive. And the life of the animal is in the blood. And he's still alive. So that blood is still flowing. 
And guess what? That blood is still flowing 2,000 years later today. And that blood continues to flow. So that blood, which was of the lamb or the bull or the goat, it dried up, lost its efficacy. The blood of Jesus continues to flow. Amen. And its power continues to flow. The blood of Jesus is still able to cleanse me of my sin because it hasn't dried up. It still flows. It's still able to do what I needed to do for my sin. Not my sin of yesterday, but the sin of today. And guess what? It still flows for my sin of tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. A new covenant, a new pact God has made for us through Jesus Christ. So I don't want to hear it. He's equal to everybody else. Sorry. Buddha hasn't resurrected. He's still in his grave. Muhammad is still in his grave. Krishna is still in his grave. And all the so-called gods of this world have no power, have no authority. But praise God, we serve the one and only living God. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. The one who sacrificed his life for you and for me and is alive today interceding, interceding to the Father on our behalf. Always looking out for us. Always watching over us. Oh, but that blood continues to flow. Hallelujah. And we praise God that we have such a privilege to be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for this privilege. Thank you for this opportunity. Bless our hearts and minds and continue to speak to us. Continue to address our lives, our hearts, and our minds. Continue, Lord, to... to, 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 to Visit your people, to be upon and among your people as we need a word from you, as we need to hear from you, as we need you, O oh God. But without you, we can do nothing. Amen. And in this world, as we would have the tribulations and the difficulties, you remind us, Lord, be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Amen. Thank you, my God, for you love us and you care for us. Yes. Bless your people. Teach us, Lord. Speak to us for your glory and your honor. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Just a few announcements, and they're pretty important, um, especially for the men of our church, and maybe some women. Today is Super Bowl Sunday, right? We know that, and it's at 530, just when the snow ends. Um, I guess God provided that for you men. <laughs> and so BGF um, Fellowship Hall downstairs, um, C Mark, we're gonna, they're going to see the game downstairs um, in the TV that we have. And C Mark for RSVP um, because they're ordering food and we need to know how much food to order. So please sign up with Mark. Tuesday, of course, is our prayers um, and Bible study at 7 p.m. And Thursday, Acts to Love, the Young Adults Bible Study, this Thursday at 7.30 at BGF. And it's actually here, not in Zoom. Um, this Friday, this coming Friday, which is February 12th, it's our Spanish service. Let's start inviting people now, even now, to come to our Spanish service, which will be this coming Friday at um, 7 o'clock, February 12th. And this is a little bit far off, but we want you to know this, and we'll keep repeating this announcement so that you're here be because the business of the church is extremely important. And so we're having a church business meeting March 14, right after service. All members should be in attendance. And if you're not a member and you're part of this church or you want to be part of this church, it's important for you to know the business of this church. So be here March 14. Um, right after service. And that is all for our announcements, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to share with you a portion of what I'm going to share with you th today. So help me. Uh, praise God. Would you stand with me? I want to read a passage of scripture and uh, See how we can get this word across. I pray it's relevant to what's going on in our world today. What we need to hear as a church. And where God is taking us as a fellowship. John chapter 14. 
to read verse 23 and on. Read in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and, he, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Father, speak to our lives, our hearts, and our minds. Amen. As I've asked you before, Lord, address us and teach us and give us insight. Give me wisdom, clarity, and understanding, Lord, to present this word with power and authority, with the wisdom from on high, that your people would be encouraged and reminded that you are faithful. And regardless of what we're going through, regardless of our circumstance, and regardless of the trajectory of this world, we are safe and secure in your hands. Amen. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. So a little taste of what I want to share with you. And I'll continue this message next week as we will have more time. Uh, clearly we're, we're in the last days, right? Yes. No doubt. We are in the last days. And I, I've been hearing this since I was 12 years old. Okay? And many moons have gone by. But if the Lord was close and if we were in the last days back then, imagine now how close the Lord's return is. Jesus says, I'm going away. But he said, I'm coming back. And he said this a couple of times, a few times to his disciples. I'm going away, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Church, Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming back. We see... Uh, 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 the, the turmoil and the confusion that our world is in right now. America is divided on so many levels. This world is confused. This world is in a panic mode. This world is in fear and in anxiety such that the Bible says that days will come when men would take their lives for fear. And fear has gotten a grip of this world, and it's a horrible grip. Okay. This financial crisis happening right now that many people have no clue and are not aware of because it's hush hush. Unless you're in that circle, in that environment, it's kept from you the reality of what's going on. And next week, Tom's going to take a few minutes and share a little bit about that reality. Because he's in that world. And I want and I pray that our church would be a fellowship that is aware, is enlightened, and, 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 and conscious of what's going on behind the scenes of this world. But Lord, all, that, all that we're hearing, all that we're, you're going to hear about, all that we're talking about is clearly prophesied, presented in God's word for his people to know. So that as Jesus said, when you see it happening... You're not surprised. You'll know what's going on. You'll understand this is what's going on. This is what Jesus spoke about. This is the reality of what's happening. Contrary to what all the social and, and all the media outlets are telling us. Right now they're telling us everything's go going good. Contrary to the reality. 
economic crisis. Uh, if, if the if we 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 personally just experienced this big crisis back in 2009, if you remember, the crash of the of the uh, 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 of Wall Street. Very similar to what happened in 1929 with the with the Great Depression. We didn't go into a depression because the government bailed everybody out <laughs> and paid everybody out mm -hmm. and made money by by simply printing. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so much, but I can't, I can't, no time. Uh, we, we see the acceleration of, 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 of the disasters that are happening worldwide, uh, natural disasters. There's a big talk right now, and, and it's been going on for a few years now, uh, global warming, right? Global warming, that's the pitch, global warming, global warming. Eh, I don't know about that. Okay. Disasters, though, are happening worldwide, and they're happening more frequently as the as, as, as what was spoken in scriptures, as Jesus said, the travails of a woman about to give birth. Uh, we, we see the unification of, of nations against Israel. Against Israel. There is an a, 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 a incredible uh, 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 uprising of anti-Semitic philosophies, anti-Semitic climate rising up here in America. Forget about, you know, the Arab nations. Here in America, uh, the, gen the degeneration of the church. It's a reality. We're seeing it with our very own eyes. How the church is becoming more worldly-minded. We're more concerned about being accepted by the world and their philosophies and, 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 and being accepted by the world as we're nice guys. We're not that bad. Than to preach the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're, we're, we're more pleasure-seeking and, 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 and we're, we're, we're prosperity-seeking and we're, our minds are on this world and everything this world has to offer, forgetting that we are not citizens of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we see how the church is turning away from the sound doctrine of the scriptures. We see persecution happening in places we never thought would happen. Yeah. I didn't get to see it yet, Miriam, but Miriam shared with me a video, uh, mentioned to me of a video of a program out there about the persecuted church, persecuted pastors mm -hmm. that are going before not, not, not the, the, the caliphates of the Middle East, but the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Here in America, Christian nation, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And we also see this, this push towards a one world religion. One world religion. Let's unite. Let's, let's stop bickering and fighting amongst one another. Let's unite and have one religion, one view. Many ways to God, which is one of the big views, right? But one view, how can that be? Jesus said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. The only way, hallelujah, and the only one, praise God. All of this to remind us that Jesus is coming back. He's on, he's on track. He's on time. And he's coming back real soon if you didn't know it. Don't be fooled. Be ready. Don't start getting ready. Be ready. And if you're not ready, get ready because he's coming back. And the Bible clearly shows us, and he clearly stated, I'm coming like a thief in the night. A thief in the night. No one expects the thief when he comes. Otherwise, you'd be at the door with a double barrel shotgun waiting for him. And when he comes in, he sneaks in, finds his way in. That's how Jesus' coming will be. But, but I get ahead of myself. I don't have time to get into the particulars of Jesus' return. I just want you to understand and remember, his time is imminent. His return, we talked about in our Bible studies on Tuesdays. Twofold, right? The invisible and the visible return of our Lord. All of this to remind you. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11 tells us that Jesus ascended into heaven. Let me read the passage for you. 
after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were watching, and a cloud took him up out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was going, then behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, whom you have been, uh, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. So Jesus is coming back. And according to that prophetic word, he's coming back the same way he went up. They saw him go up. Physically, with their physical eyes. He's going to come back where everyone will see him with physical eyes, seeing him coming and returning as he promised he would. The event that was set the stage for this return, the second coming of Jesus Christ, right? The first, of the, the first part of, this, of his second coming, the invisible, the rapture. We read that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, right? But now the physical, visible return of our Lord. The event that's going to take, make this a reality, make this happen, is what is known as the, uh, we have the rapture, we have a second return, physical. The event that's going to take this, to make this a reality will be what's known as the Battle of Armageddon. Now, I can, I can spend two hours on this subject, which I won't, I promise you. Don't get anxious. The Battle of Armageddon is what we allude to many times as World War III. Now, Pastor, why are you talking about this? Because not many people are. Not many people are. We, we think we've got 100 years to go, and Jesus is coming back. So we can live any which way we want and be comfortable living our lives. And then just before I die, 30, 40 years from now, I'll accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Or I'll get right with God. I want to tell you, we don't have time. Amen. You don't have time to play church. You don't have time to play God, games with God. You don't have time to, to, to risk your salvation by being a church member and having your name on the roll and that being enough and sufficient thinking that that's okay with God and that'll be enough to get you into glory. Nor are you going to be saved simply because your husband goes to church or your wife goes to church and you'll be able to hold on to her apron or his jacket. Uh, you're not going to be rescued because your grandmother has been faithful for G to Jesus for 50 years and you can, you can ride on her cloak. This is an individual thing between you and God. This is personal between you and God. And you don't have the time, I'm telling you, church. I'm telling you, people. You don't have the time. Amen. The Lord's return is imminent. It can happen any moment. Yes. It can happen in this snowstorm right now. We are planning on watching the Super Bowl, but who knows? Maybe just before kickoff, we're out of here. <laughs> Armageddon has to happen. The battle has to happen for Jesus to physically return. Because he's coming back for a reason. And the reason is to rescue his people, Israel. Because he made a promise to Abraham. He made a promise to his people that he will not abandon them. He will not leave them. He will rescue them. He will save them as a nation. So let me explain to you real quick the, 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 the setup that is happening right now for that day. The Bible speaks of this man who will make a seven-year agreement, a seven-year peace deal with Israel. He's going to come out of Europe, okay? There's going to be a seven-year peace deal he's going to make. That's why the tribulation period is a seven-year period. Because he's going to make a peace deal with Israel. The seven-year period of, of Daniel, chapter uh, 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 9 of Daniel, which is described as Daniel's 70th week, okay? There will be this peace agreement he makes with Israel. He is known as, in Scripture, Antichrist. The man whom will allow Satan himself to indwell him. He's alive right now, if you didn't know. 
He's alive right now. We may have, may have even heard his name, but we don't know who he is. He's not been revealed yet. The time will come when God will reveal him. He will appear as a peacemaker. He's going to make peace with Israel. A nice guy. He's going to be so convincing, so, so accepted by the world, not just one nation, by the world. He's going to come out of Europe. Because in Daniel 4 and 7, it says that he will be the ruler over the ten toes of Daniel's vision of the statue which represents the nations of the world. The ten toes. He's going to be the ruler of those ten toes. That is, the ten toes is splintered Roman Empire. The Roman Empire that split. And guess what is the Roman Empire split? Europe. Europe. So he's coming out of Europe. And in Europe, we know today that Europe is united, right? The European common market. One currency, the euro, all pushing towards the one world unification of finance. And it's coming. It's coming. It's coming faster than you even realize. It's in play already. And the tests are being made already to make this a worldwide reality not just the European common market. The euro is the currency of Europe right now. Uh, and the common market of Europe, the, the, the nations that make up the European common market, have not only have one currency, but they have one leader whom they all come and meet with and agree with and make deals and arrangements and financial decisions and what have you. But they have no borders. You can go from France to Germany to Italy, to all the nations of Europe, don't need a passport. Open borders. Open borders. You can go, you can take a train and go from, go all over Europe, nation to nation, on a train. No problem. You don't have to present a passport. The, so he'll rise up out of Europe and he will become the peacemaker to Israel. So he makes this arrangement, and he makes this peace deal, and not only does he make peace with Israel, but he then seizes power worldwide. So he appears to be a peacemaker, but guess what? Daniel 11 tells us that there's a king of the north who's going to challenge him. He's not going to want to submit to this guy, to this ruler. To this man who, who he's the king of the north realizes he doesn't want just peace with Israel. He wants to dominate the world. And the king of the north is not having it. Do you know who the king of the north is? Russia. Russia. Do you remember Russia once was the Soviet Union? All the eastern bloc nations were part of Europe. And, 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 and Europe was powerful because all the resources of these eastern bloc nations brought in resources to Russia, and Russia was wealthy and, 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 and well-to-do and powerful as an army, as a, as a military uh, 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 formidable uh, uh, um, force, such that America was afraid, remember? Right? And then Reagan comes into power, Mr. Gorbachev, take this wall down, and the Berlin Wall fell, and so went the Soviet Union. Everybody thought Russia was done with, forgotten, no power, weak. All the armaments and whatnot of the, of the, of the, of the Russian uh, arm, uh, armies were taken, sold to Arab nations that are anti-Israel. All of this military power, all of this machinery, all of this, this, this weaponry got dispersed throughout the world. But something happened. Russia is now formidable again. Not as a Soviet Union, but as a nation, Russia. The bear. Powerful. Such that America now is being careful dealing with Russia. Right? Okay. Well, Russia does not want to submit to this man. And Russia will come against this man. With Russia, Daniel says that the king of the south will also unite with the king of the north to fight against this man, Antichrist. In a particular place, where? In Israel, in a valley called Megiddo, or Armageddon. Because this is the place where all the armies throughout history in the Bible days 
chose to use as a battleground. It is a strategic fighting ground. It's a valley. And the armies are going to line up against this man, the king of the north, Russia, and the king of the south. Guess who the king of the south is? Egypt and all the Arab nations and those who follow Islam. How do you think Israel will get the temple rebuilt when the Dome of the Rock is there right now? Something has to happen. Antichrist is going to make that peace agreement because he's going to destroy Russia, Egypt, and the Arab nations. And Israel is going to say, our savior. In that destruction, that Dome of Rock's going down. And Israel will again rebuild the temple. And the temple will be re re rebuilt according to prophetic utterances by Daniel and the prophecies of the Old Testament. Why is this important? Because Israel will once again present the sacrifices to the Lord. I've shared with you before how Israel has already set everything in motion to be able to sacrifice. All they need is the temple again. Antichrist is going to help them get that temple. Peacemaker. Peacemaker. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it right here. But I want to read to you Revelation chapter 16, verse 13 and on, which tells us. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the entire world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. This is Jesus speaking. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his clothes so that he will not walk about naked and people will not see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place which in Hebrew is called Har Magedan. So, we have the nations against the Antichrist. We have Satan drawing the nations to Israel. And we have God bringing the nations to confront the Antichrist. I want to just finish with this statement. The devil thinks he's a puppet maker, puppet master. He thinks he's the one in control. He thinks he's the one who's doing everything to fulfill his purpose. But he doesn't know that God is using him to fulfill God's purpose. Amen. Because God made a promise to Israel. I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to bring you back to myself. And the return of our Lord Jesus Christ is to do just that. Redeem Israel. Because the church has already been redeemed. Amen. The church has already been raptured seven years before. The church is already in glory in his presence. The church has already received its crowns and its accolades. And the church has already recognized that the only reason why we had any power, we did any miracles, we did anything for God's glory was because Jesus gave us the power and the strength to do it so that we take our crowns off that we receive and we lay them at his feet because he's the only one who's worthy of praise, of glory, and honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. And guess what? When Jesus comes back, there's a bunch of people coming with him. There's a bunch of people coming with him. He's coming back on a white horse, which is not necessarily a white horse, but a, 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 a symbol of his power, his authority, and his conquering of all things. And he comes in victory. Hallelujah. And he's coming back, and every eye will see him, the Bible says. Every eye will see him. The whole world. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I can imagine because we have now, we have now uh, satellite television. We have uh, the internet. We have iPhones. We have things that we can see things going on as they're happening on the other side of the world. So there's no coincidence that God allowed this kid to make up this thing called an iPhone, an iPad, and a, what do you call it, the, the computer? A Mac. Uh, Mac, a Mac, yeah. Exactly. There's no, there's no coincidence that God has allowed men to come up with these contraptions to be able to see things happening live. Live. We don't have to wait for the next day to watch the news, what happened. We can watch it while it's going on. The Bible says every eye will see him. And even those who pierced him, those who rejected him, 
when Antichrist comes against Israel and sets himself up to be as God, Israel's eyes will open and say, yeah, he came as peace, but really he's an anti-God guy. He does not want to adhere to God who is Yahweh. He's going to come and want to establish himself as God. And Israel, Israel was delivered from the spirit of idolatry in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. And Israel will bow to nothing and no one else but the Lord. Now, they don't know who the Lord is yet. They think it's just God, Yahweh. They don't know it's Jesus Christ. But the Bible says when he comes against them, Jesus says, if, you, if you're at the mountaintop, don't come down. If you're in the valley, don't get out. If you're out in the field, don't go out because tribulation will come. And woe to those who are with child, Jesus said. Run to the hills. Run to the mountains. Hide. Because it's going to be a terrible day when this man unleashes, unleashes his anger against Israel. But praise God that God is faithful. He will not be able to destroy Israel. Although he destroyed Russia, he destroyed China, the, the, next, the next king of the east. He's going to destroy uh, uh, the Arab nations and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and the Islam. He's going to destroy all of this. But he will not be able to destroy Israel as small as Israel is. Why? Because God is Israel's defender. When Jesus comes back, Israel will look up as a nation and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, look, look on his thigh. It says, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. They're going to look and say, wait a minute. He's got wounds. Wait a minute. This is the same guy that we allowed the Romans to crucify. The one who we said was a, was a bastard. That's uh, Jesus. And Israel will finally recognize whom their Messiah is. And he, coming down with him is the church of Jesus Christ, his bride. Hallelujah. And they're going to bow to him and they're going to recognize him as Lord. Do you know, uh, 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 let me finish. Do you realize that for all eternity, Jesus will be the only person in heaven, the only person with scars? You know, when you, get, when you get raptured, whether you were dead and then you rose from the dead, or you were alive and you got taken up, you're going to have a glorified body. It's going to be a perfect body. You're not going to feel any pain. You're not going to be tired. You're going to be forever 25. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be perfect. No blemishes, no acne problems. None of that nonsense that we suffer here on planet Earth. We're going to have perfect bodies. Jesus resurrected physically also. And he was he did receive a glorified body. But when he resurrected what did he tell Thomas who doubted? Thomas, I'm not a ghost. Come here, touch me. Do you know you're going to be able to touch Jesus? Yes. You know you're going to be able to grab his hand. Maggie, Maggie was sharing the other day, Pastor, I want to be the first one. <laughs> I don't want to wait for those millions of Christians and other people to, I want to, I don't know how the Lord's going to do it. But he's going he's gonna to grab us all and take us into his arms, praise God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel Jesus' touch. I'm going to feel his heartbeat like John, John did. I'm going to feel him, hallelujah, praise God. And, and told Thomas, come touch me. Look at my hands. The wounds were still there. If it's here, here, it doesn't matter. Point is, his hands had the wound of the nails. His feet had the wounds of the nails. Jesus will be the only one. He will be so unique, so distinct. And that distinction, the wounds on his, on his feet, the wounds in his hands, the sword piercing on his side, that wound on his side, we will be able to touch it, feel it. Do you hear me, church? Do you hear me? You're going to have a perfect body. No issues with you. But Jesus saw to it, God saw to it, that the scars of Jesus would remain forever to remind you what I did for you. Remind you how I gave my life for you. Remind you forever in case you ever forget. 
If you ever wonder a million years from eternity, if, if this was real, his scars will remind you. His wounds will remind you. And when you, listen, I told you this, this beginning of this worship service, do you need a band to worship him? You need a musician, you need a gifted singer to, to worship him? Listen to me. Just the fact that Jesus Christ's wounds remind us. Yeah. When I look at those wounds, when I look at that scar, I, I, I'm grateful, oh God, for saving me. I'm grateful, oh God, for dying on the cross for me. I'm grateful, oh God, for the blessings you gave me while I was on planet Earth. But I worship you, Lord, because you gave your life for me. I worship you, God, because of what you suffered for me. I, I'm grateful for all the things I'm going to get. Listen, you're going to get a new name. You're going to get crowns. You're going to get the glorified body. You're going to have a. You're going to have. So much to do and so much to accomplish for God's glory. You might get a planet. I don't know. You might get a solar system. I don't know because the universe is huge, church. The universe is huge. And we'll travel at the speed of thought. Praise God. All of this stuff is wonderful. I can't wait to walk with the lion. I told, I told my kids one time, I can't wait to swim with dolphins. They said, Dad, you can do that now. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to swim with whales. I can't wait to go to the deep depths of the ocean because I'm, I, I, I won't drown. I won't drown. Lord, help me at six feet, I'll drown. Okay. But all of this wonderful stuff the Lord has in store for us is, is great, it's beautiful. But that's not what motivates me to worship him. Amen. What motivates me to worship him is the price he paid the sacrifice he did on my behalf to think, Lord, that I am worthy for you to die. And I can't imagine that being the case because I'm not worthy. Who am I that a king should die? Who am I that the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, would give his life for me? Who am I? Look at me. Who am I? Yet he did. Hallelujah. And so I can't help but worship him. I can't help but bow before him. I can't help but give him the glory and the honor that he alone is worthy of. Hallelujah. And there is no equal to him. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is none like you, O oh God. Yes. Come on, church. Praise the Lord with me, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Yes. There is none like you, Lord. You alone are worthy of all glory and all honor. I want to tell you, he's coming back. He's coming back, just like he said he would. He's coming back. Are you ready? Are you ready? Not getting ready. Are you ready? First Corinthians we're reading this morning. For the preaching of this gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who believe, it is the power of God unto salvation. This might sound like nonsense to a lot of people. Might sound like a fairy tale. Might sound like something right out of a, a Dr. Seuss book or a, or a science fiction movie. But let me tell you something. It's real. Amen. So would you buy a hedge where you are? I want to pray. If you're not sure, listen to me. If you're not sure that you are ready, if the trumpet would sound right now, that you would be taken up to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're not sure, I want to give you that opportunity today to make that profession of faith right now because this is the day of salvation. This is the day. Not tomorrow, not next week, not when you feel better, not when you start doing good stuff. Right now. Come as you are. All you who are heavy laden, heavy burdened. I'll give you rest, rest, peace, and all the stuff this world is throwing at us. All it does is create anxiety and stress and fear. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have peace, not like the world. I give you my peace, peace. Your mind, your heart is at rest, knowing that you're secure in God. You're secure in him because he's faithful. And if he promises, he'll do it. He's not like a man who makes a promise. And has to back out of it because under the circumstances. There is no circumstance that cancels out God's promise. God is above the circumstance. God is above it all. Hallelujah. And his, 
word is the final word. Father, I want to present to you every person, either standing in the sanctuary, hearts cried out to you, or standing, heart open to you, who are observing and listening to us via social media. I want to present every one of these persons to you, oh God. They're making profession of faith. They're recommitting themselves to you, Lord God. Let your will be done. Let your will be done in their hearts and their minds. Bring salvation. Bring deliverance. Break the yoke that the enemy has a hold on their mind and their heart. And bring them, O oh God, the light of your gospel. Save, Lord. Heal, Lord. Restore. Bring deliverance. Open the eyes of our understanding, O oh God, that we would know the truth of your word. That, we would, that our faith would be rekindled. Our faith would take us to the place, O oh God, where you are. Bring deliverance. Bring salvation. Open the eyes of our understanding, Father. We thank you. We bless you. We worship you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. She